Hello and welcome to 12T Health. I'm your host, Dr. Derek De Silva. It happens to many of us. You can't remember the name of an acquaintance or where you put your keys. Brain fog is a symptom of getting older, but it turns out that there are many things you can do to age-proof your brain, clear out the fog, and improve your brain power. My next guest is Dr. Cynthia Green. She's an assistant professor of psychiatry at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York and the founder of the Memory Enhancement Program. She's also the author of 30 Days to Total Brain Health. Thank you very much for coming back to see us here. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So how much brain function power do we lose as we get older? You know, that really varies from person to person. What we do know is that we experience changes in our intellectual performance as we grow older, just like we might, you know, we can't run as quickly as we did. We may not be able to process information or stay as focused, and that impacts memory. So we experience it as changes in memory. The good news is that research has shown that if we work on honing those skills and on practicing those skills, we can keep them up at a better level that can help us preserve our function. So let's talk about some of the things that we can do. And, and you brought us some bullet points as to what we can do. And we're going to put them up on the screen right now. So the first one is practice brain skills. What does that mean? So the skills that mostly change as we grow older are things like attention, our ability to process information quickly, our ability to think flexibly or nimbly, so to multitask, and those impact memory. And if we work on those skills, then we, science has shown that we can maintain them better. One of the best things we can do, I tell my clients, is to play games against the clock. Because if you think about playing something against uh, that's timed, you have to pay attention, you have mm -hmm. to think quickly and flexibly in order to do well. So right. that's a great way to maintain those skills. And the next one is novelty. I guess something new? Yeah, because we tend to fall, if you think about it, our brains kind of start patterns and we think along the same way. If we challenge ourselves to think of things differently, for example, uh, one of the things I advise people to do is just little things like turning your watch upside down. So if you wore your watch upside down all day today, your brain would have to kind of reprocess and think differently about that visual information when you look at the time. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of novelty that if we introduce it regularly into our lives can help keep things fresh. I think if I did that, I'd end up going home a little bit earlier, you know, just get ready to <laughs> leave right now. Uh, mental acuity. <laughs> so one of the things we want to do is stay mentally sharp. So we want to stay engaged. We want to keep challenging ourselves with new activities. Research has shown that that might build something called cognitive reserve. And studies have found that people who have higher levels of intellectual engagement have an associated reduced risk for dementia. And socializing, very important. Socializing is really important. If you think of everything we just discussed, the skills, the novelty, the intellectual engagement, we get that when we're socially engaged. A study out of Harvard, for example, found that people who reported higher levels of social engagement were significantly less likely to have memory loss over a six-year period. Mm -hmm. So we know that social engagement offers us a lot of opportunity to keep our brain sharp. Now, you did an event in uh, Pompton Plains where yes. you had people do all kinds of fun, different things. And we have some video, so let's, yes. let's see some of that video. And okay. I want you to talk about what they're doing here, juggling. Right, so we have an event called the Total Brain Health Fair where we actually want people to experience different brain health activities. Juggling was found in a study in Germany to improve white matter volume, to improve your brain's physiological health. And here is uh, master juggler Jen Slaw, and she has folks here juggling. They're juggling with scarves, and some of the people mastered this really well. Mm -hmm. And this is just one of the many kinds of events. This one is both a physical and an intellectual event, right? And the next thing you have here is drawing cartoons. Right. Is that the same as the whole doodling thing? It is. You know, doodling, by the way, has been found to improve attention in people of all ages. But the cartooning is a way of engaging intellectually, trying a different way of stretching our brain. Here's artist Arnie Harder working with the folks at the fair and teaching them this new skill. It's something that you might do if you doodle, but you've never really tried cartooning. So what does this do again? So it's a way of engaging intellectually, engaging your mind in a way that you didn't before. So engaging in terms of those mental kind of challenges and finding a new way to think and see the world. And the next one we have here is what, Karen? I forget what you said. Oh, words. Word this games. This is words. Okay, word so games. this is just a simple word game. This is one of the booths that we put up. It's a word Well, scramble. this one kind of makes sense, yeah, right? Yeah, people are very familiar with this kind of activity. So it's not a timed activity. This was a group activity at the event. But these are the small kinds of things. You could put up a word like this. Find a word in the newspaper or in the dictionary that's a really long word and every day challenge yourself in that small way. Mm -hmm. And then we have, uh, we're coming up here, we have a, 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 an activity which is Zumba. 
Yes. I, obviously moving, good for the brain. I, is yes. that That's you, right? That's that you dancing? That is totally not me. Wouldn't that be great if it was? <laughs> I was wearing high heels and a skirt at this event. Look but at the guy. that. Look at him. I mean, I'll bet you he was a dancer when he was younger. Yeah. Look he's, at isn't that fabulous? Yeah. And so he is, you know, Zumba is a physical activity. They also had... Um, other kinds of physical activities um, like the juggling and yoga at this event, but this is a great aerobic activity. This is a Zumba Gold that is offered by New Vitality, who was our mm -hmm. partner at this event. Now, what I would imagine that what happens here is brain, fo uh, brain flow, blood flow. Is, is this what, why the Certainly, activity is you know, so good? Exercise is great for your brain, and if you look at the science, it's one of the strongest things that we see in terms of improving both everyday intellectual performance, reducing dementia risk, and improving the physiological health of your brain. We may not understand the, all the reasons, but certainly, absolutely, blood flow, reduction of risk for other diseases that impact brain health, such as diabetes mm -hmm. and hypertension, and helping maintain healthy weight, which also has been associated with uh, better brain function later absolutely. in life. Absolutely. And the last video we have is meditation. And yes. if I'm not mistaken, this is a form of meditation called tapping. Yes. And this is, we see here, um, brain meditation expert Greg Quinn, who mm -hmm. also works with New Vitality, providing this class for seniors. There's been some very interesting studies recently looking at not this form of meditation, but other forms of meditation. Just meditation in general? Meditation in general. Uh, is one study looked at it in folks with early stage Alzheimer's disease and found that it improved some of their cognitive function in terms of verbal fluency and also improved symmetry in terms of on MRI looking at their brain uh, function. Mm -hmm. And then there have been other studies out of uh, Harvard out of Herbert Benson's mm -hmm. Institute there, mm -hmm. looking at the impact of meditation and all different kinds of mindfulness and meditation on improving cognitive function. Well, since you mentioned Herbert Benson, Dr. Herbert Benson yes. from the Mind Body Institute at Harvard, you mention in your book, 30 Days to Total Brain Health, uh, brain health excuse me, Mind, Body, Spirit. Right. H how does all of that fit into brain health? So the thing about our program, Total Brain Health, was really a philosophical approach to brain health because there's so much information now. And what I think is really important for everyone to understand is that we really can support brain health not just by doing crossword puzzles or taking a class. It's really a matter of understanding how the science contributes across physical, intellectual, and social dimensions to supporting both our everyday memory performance, keeping ourselves sharp, and promoting better brain health over our lifespan. And we need to look at doing taking better care of ourselves across that full spectrum of well-being. Super. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Thank Green. Thank you. It's pleasure. been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, and, and pleasure to have you back. Stay with us, folks, on 12 Year Health. I'll answer some of your email questions, and also after this break, we'll talk about how to boost the health and nutrition levels of your summer barbecues. But first, your health bite of the week. If you can't always buy organic to avoid pesticides, you don't have to worry as much about this list of fruit and vegetables. Welcome back to 12 Year Health, I'm Dr. Derek De Silva. With the warm weather, fresh produce, and longer days, summer can make it easy to be healthy, if you keep a few things in mind. With me today is someone who can help us make healthier and delicious choices during these summer barbecues. Dietitian Erin Polinski is back on the show to tell us how it's done. Erin, welcome back. Thanks so much for having me. So what's, what's the big deal about barbecues? Are, are there, is there a downside? To there barbecuing? Can be. Yeah, barbecues can be really healthy if you watch, but they can be loaded with lots of saturated fat, refined carbohydrates, and even carcinogens in some foods if you're not careful. L I mean, give, give us some examples of that. Yeah, l let me give you an example. Sure. I was at a barbecue and I saw people putting lighter fluid on. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's got to be a no no, right? Well, yeah, because if you get the meat to extreme temperatures when you're cooking, it actually uh, makes the proteins break down to form carcinogens, and the higher you cook it, the more that forms. So you really have to be careful with how you're cooking. Well, one of the great things, as I mentioned, was uh, fresh produce. What are some of the 
the better fresh produce things that we can grill. Well, there's so much now because if you go to your farmer's market, there's so much local and fresh, which is great. It's affordable mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, but you can do everything. You can put fruit on the grill. Pineapple comes up delicious. You can grill tomatoes, cel er, celery, zucchini, really anything, um, even portobello mushrooms, which I'll show us later. But you can kind of get creative and make kebabs and really just try it on the grill. And for the most part, it comes out good. <laughs> well, I can see the, you know, I've seen people do a lot of the mushrooms and the apple mm -hmm. and pear and all of those things, yes. which is which is really cool to do. Now, do you traditionally cook like that? Yes. I mean, really in the summer, it's great to take advantage because one, the grill's easy cleanup, you know, it's nice mm -hmm. and quick, but why not take advantage of all the fresh produce that's available now and really get creative? Perfect. So, uh, obviously, Jersey tomatoes, Jersey corn, some fruit. What, what do we have here? Sure. So, we have some fresh berries, some um, melons, lots of corn and, and tomatoes, and these are all things that are right now local in season, and I know a lot of people complain about the affordability of fr fresh fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. but since they're locally grown right now, if you go to your farmer's market, it's a delicious and easy deal, and it's affordable. All right, and we've got a whole beautiful table of stuff here. What else do we have? What is this right here? Well, that is a healthy dip you can make. If you want to dip your fruit or vegetables in the summer, because sometimes you're outside, maybe by the pool, um, with dip, if you buy it in the store, lots of times it's high in saturated fat as well as sugar. So if you just get non-fat Greek yogurt and put your own seasonings in, it's delicious, it's less um, expensive, and mm -hmm. it's also a lot healthier for you. Now, the other thing I want to mention very quickly about yogurt is when you're doing yogurt, mm -hmm. it is always better to buy yogurt that doesn't have fruit in it and add your own fruit, Absolutely, correct? Absolutely, yes, because when they add the fruit in, they're adding a lot of added sugars. It's not just sugar from the fruit typically. So if you just get the plain and add your own fruit in, like the fresh berries, it's delicious, but it's a lot better for you. Whole grains. Looks like you have some type of uh, right. bread here. Well, a typical barbecue, usually you're getting more refined grains than you are whole grains, and these are an excellent source of fiber. So an easy switch is if you just take whole grain buns, 100% whole grain, mm -hmm. hot dog and hamburger buns, and switch it, you get more fiber that way. Wonderful. And this... I you know, I don't. I didn't know what pot stickers were. <laughs> I mean, I had no idea what they were. What are they? Well, pot stickers are basically like dumplings. It's just a small amount of dough, and you can fill them with uh, fresh vegetables and lean protein. Mm -hmm. But a typical pot sticker is more refined carbohydrate. These make a great fun appetizer. You can actually grill them. And I love these whole grain ones. These are CB, uh, CJ's BB Go whole grain pot stickers, and they actually make it with a thinner wrapper so you can put more vegetables in. Mm -hmm. And what I love about it, working with them, is that they're actually 17 grams of whole grain, four grams of fiber in one serving. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great fun way to get in more whole grains. So you're putting you're putting that on the grill versus in the oven? Right. Well, typically a, a pot sticker is usually fried, so you're adding a lot of oil to it. I see. So these, yeah, you toss them right on the grill. You could put a little olive oil if you want, and it's a really fun appetizer. It makes it more memorable. Sounds Even, good to me. Yeah, they have a chicken barbecue one you can try. And what do we have here? <laughs> well, a typical barbecue, you're getting um, ground beef hamburgers, you're getting sausage and hot dogs, high in saturated fat. These are vegetable-based options. Um, you take a vegetable burger, put it on the grill, or this mm. right here is a portobello mushroom burger. Oh, delicious. Yum. Very good, yeah, and I you can just marinate mushrooms. the mushrooms, put them on the grill, delicious, and you're getting no saturated fat that way. And then turkey burgers, you can throw those? Turkey burgers too, just make sure they're 100% white meat turkey burger, because otherwise you get the darker meat, which is more saturated fat. Oh. Of course. No wonder I like that joke of me. Um, cherries. Okay, well. I ate about a pound of cherries the other day. I got a cooler with that. I well, love cherries. It's a good thing they're healthy for you, yeah, right? Yeah, I love cherries. I love cherries. Well, the great thing about cherries is, as we know, when we cook meat at high temperatures, animal proteins, they break down into compounds, which are actually carcinogens. So a really interesting study came out of Michigan University, and they found if you mix ground cherries with ground beef before cooking, it actually cut down the carcinogen production by as much as 78%. Wow. Yeah. So it's a really impressive study um, right. and they found just one cup of ground cherries to one pound of ground beef did it. Now tell me what you what the other two things are. You brought some, what are those right there? What are the pills? These are actually vitamin E and you can take vitamin E oil. Another study found just 120 milligrams in four ounce beef patties cut down carcinogen production too. So you can even Well it's an antioxidant it's so an it antioxidant. makes sense. Exactly. So just like the cherries this is a great option as well. And what else do you, looks like garlic and what else do you have? This is dried rosemary and garlic. They're great flavorful seasonings but they also halt the production of carcinogens. So if you season your animal proteins like if you 
turkey burger or beef, with this, it can help cut down on that production too. And, and it looks like olive oil at the end. Right, and we know olive oil is good for our heart, but actually using it in cooking too also cuts carcinogen production, so it's good for your heart as well as a disease prevention. Now, does it matter what kind of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, regular olive oil, it, or doesn't it make a difference? As far as the research on it, there wasn't a difference. It seemed that both of them help produce, uh, decrease the carcinogen production. Wonderful. So you are based in in Vernon? Is it, where right, well, we actually have our office is actually in Hardiston, which is Sussex County, and then we have an office in um, Bergen County in Ramsey as well. I just wanted to give you a plug because you've <laughs> been so wonderful to come here and share this thank great information so with us. It's a pleasure it. to have you. Have a great summer. You too. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. When we Stay with us, folks. When we come back, I'll answer your email questions. But first, here's a look at this week's Community Health Calendar. You're watching 12 Year Health on News 12 New Jersey. I'm Dr. Derek De Silva. Time now to answer some of your health questions. Here's the first one. I've been having muscle weakness in my right leg. It hasn't been working quite right when I'm walking. Any idea what it could be? Well, folks, the first thing I'm going to tell this viewer is to make sure you go to the doctor, get it checked out. My opinion on what it could be is something going on in your back, if it's just one side. You want to start off with an x-ray. If the x-ray doesn't show anything and it's still bothering you, maybe an MRI. Could be a nerve problem, maybe an EMG or a nerve conduction study would be another good idea. But very important that you see your doctor and get this looked at. And our next viewer question is, wants to know, for months now, I've been having a chronic nasal discharge, constantly blowing my nose every day. When I'm asleep, it builds up, and I wake up and start coughing. What can I do? Well, the first thing you need to do is change your pillow. A lot of times, what happens is, when you're sleeping, the pillow is a source for a lot of allergens, whether it be, whether it be uh, I was gonna say termites, no, not termites, <laughs> dust mites, or any other allergens, pollens, things like that that are on your pillow could be a problem, could be an issue. So make sure that you go to your doctor and get that checked out, because also you could have an allergy, you could use some nose sprays, nasal things are also very important to do. But again, you can have allergy testing, et cetera, done, all right? So thank you very much for those questions. If you have questions for me, please email them to 12thehealth at news12.com, and I may just answer them right here on the show. And for more information about anything you've seen on our show today, go to the Features section of news12.com and look for our 12 to Your Health show page. Thanks for watching 12 to Your Health, and until next time, I'm Dr. Derek De Silva, and may you always be blessed with good health. In New Jersey, breaking news never stops. Breaking news here at City Hall in Newark as the mayor gets ready to... So you need to stay informed all day, every day. Right now, we've got the latest details on this ongoing construction project right here in Edison. That's why we're here for you. We're here now with the latest details on a developing story in Clifton. Prospect Park Superintendent says... Stay with the only go. news station that never stops covering the New Jersey news. News 12 New Jersey. Around New Jersey, around the clock.